Torres. I'm the owner and inventor of Game Fades Barbershop and the new revolutionary barber gaming chairs. The way I heard about One Stop Inventing was um, I was looking for a, an inventing company, a prototype company to help me um, engineer my invention to bring it from a drawing to life. I didn't know how to do that. I was stuck in that position. I was in the car with my cousin one night and we were discussing this, that we didn't know where to go or what to do. And then all of a sudden I looked at my phone and I saw that One Stop Inventing wanted to follow me. And then I looked at my cousin and I was like, wow, look at this. I said, let's check it out. And when I clicked on it, I started to follow. It said, do you have an idea? Do you have um, a drawings or whatever and you want to bring it to life? Exactly what I was looking for, it was amazing. So before One Stop Inventing, I went to a couple of prototype companies. One of the companies wanted to like change my idea. My idea is an electrical um, retractable monitor that comes from the bottom of the chair and comes in front of you. And I wanted it electrical. And one of the companies tried to tell me, no, I think that you should do it manually. I think that you should just grab it with your hand and bring it up and trying to change my vision, my idea. I just didn't have any luck. They were quoting me a, a lot, a lot of money. When I finally met One Stop Inventing, they never tried to change my idea. They were, they were cool about everything. They loved my idea. They started leading me through the way of finding out exactly what to do. And I was able to, to do it all the way with them. This inventing process was was very, very, very um, difficult. It was the hardest task that I've ever done in my life. Um, there was times that um, that I felt like like I was failing, you know? It all started off with, with a little sketch, just like this. You know, it was just an idea that I had. And when I finally drew it, I pushed it away from myself. And when I looked at it, I, I knew it was gonna work. So that's when it all started. It started from a sketch. To, uh, to actually going to CAD, um, computer-aided designs, um, pr preliminary renderings is what it's called, and um, prototyping over and over again. It was hard, it was very, very hard. The, there was times that, that I was so discouraged that I was like heartbroken. But um, I never gave up, you know? And um, look, we're here today, and I'm about to do the grand opening of Game Fades Barbershop, something I've been dreaming about for the last seven years. When it came time to start to manufacture professionally, all I had was a, was a prototype that was made in the backyard. Um, I had the drawings, like my sketches, and I tried to build this mechanism on my own, but it was really difficult. I needed some help. So I ran into a guy, some Cuban, some little Cuban man, and when I showed him the drawings, he told me that, yeah, I can do this, don't worry about it, you know? So he charged me for him to make this literally in his backyard with his own hands. I believed in the man and it took him nine months, but he actually, he did it. He was able to make me my very first prototype. The prototype was a little, well, it wasn't perfect, it wasn't professional, but it, it was what I asked for. Then I found One Stop Inventing. One Stop Inventing were the people that were able to lead me to the to the, to the engineers, hooked me up with the engineers that actually did the, the preliminary renderings, which is the CAD, um, com a computer-aided design that they, and these computer-aided designs, they do part by part. And then they make, they make all the parts separated and then they put it all together like a puzzle. And then that's how they do it professionally. One Stop Inventing was the ones that lead, led me to that, to that point that I was able to start my invention professionally. We did a couple of prototypes, but I needed um, electrical stuff done to my prototype. My prototype was just only mechanical stuff. What I needed was a, a circuit board. I needed, um, I needed a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that, <laughs> this has not been easy, you know? I was able to um, find the, the, the person that was able to customize a circuit board, which is the brain of the mechanism, which is what tells the mechanism and the chair what to do. That, that man, his name is Bertho Bowman. His um, company is called Vinland Corporation. Me um, and One Stop Inventing and Bertho Bowman came together and between the three of us, we were able to get this prototype working perfectly so um, working with money and everything. So the chair makes money on its own. Working with bill validators, just like a, 
a vending machine or like a gaming chair. Um, after that, I was a, I was have I needed to find a company that was able to manufacture the parts professionally. One Stop Inventing has really guided me and really helped me take my invention to a professional level and helped my dream come true. You know, I'll tell you my story of how how I thought about this and how everything happened. I was 17 years old and I was working at a barber shop that's literally on the next shopping center of my barbershop now. The barbershop's name was Fade City. I was the only one cutting hair that day. Um, back, back then, um, there was a console that was called Sega Dreamcast. People are my age, they'll probably know what I'm talking about. It's like a console, just like a PlayStation or Xbox. The barbers that I used to work with, they came and they brought a Sega Dreamcast inside of the barbershop. The owner of the barbershop had a big screen TV in the corner of the barbershop. These barbers connected that Sega Dreamcast to this big screen TV, and they started playing Street Fighter versus Capcom. This is like a, like a legendary video game that I used to play when I was a kid. So when they were playing, like they were making a scene, like they were all entertained, they were betting on games. Oh, I bet you $20 I'll win this game, this and that. And you know, even I was entertained, you know, looking at it while I was cutting hair. I noticed that the kid that I was cutting, he must have been about 15 years old at the time. He kept looking over there with a smile on his face, like he was super duper entertained with what these barbers were playing on the video game. You know, it was, so was I, I was looking at it too. So, um, um, but the thing is, is that when you're a barber, when you're cutting hair, you're constantly spinning the chair. And every time I will spin the chair like this, the kid will be like this, like trying to constantly look at what was going on with the video game. So finally I had to tell the kid, hey, look, man, can you please stop moving? Let me finish your haircut. And I saw the disappointment on his face. So he was kind of like disappointed that he couldn't watch the video games anymore. But when I was done cutting that kid's hair, he ended up walking out and I ended up sitting on the barber chair. And I started spinning the bar barber chair like this. And then I thought to myself, hold up a minute. If I had a little screen right here in front of me, no matter where I turn, the screen is always gonna be in front of my face. So then I thought to myself, oh wow, that's a great idea. At the time, I guess I was really young. I didn't think about pursuing something like that. And I just thought ah, somebody will come out with it one day. Very dumb thing to think. It was just a five minute thought that I thought to myself, this is something that I never told anybody. Um, 13 years later, I had stopped cutting hair a couple of years before, and I started living a, a, a life that I wasn't supposed to be living. You know, I was doing things that, that was risking my life, doing things, um, I was headed down the wrong path. I ended up getting into some trouble in the beginning of 2013. Um, and I, it, it landed me in jail, you know? Um, when I was in jail, I was destroyed, you know, because I thought I was going to do at least 10 years, you know, because because I got I got into some serious trouble. And then when I was in there, you know, I thought to myself, Adrian, what are you going to do with your life when you get out of here? You can't go back out there and do the same thing, you know. You can't afford to go through this again, you know. So I started thinking and I thought to myself, the only thing that you could do to not get in trouble is cut hair. So, um... I said, you're gonna have to go back to your roots. So I started just sketching on papers, little drawings of barber shops. I would even do the little air compressor with the air hoses. Like these air hoses here. This was like, I even drew these. I even drew these on the paper, on the drawings and stuff of how detailed I would get on the, the drawings. And then one night, it was like about two in the morning. And I remember, I remember that day 13 years before the year 2000, that Sunday when that kid, when I was cutting that kid's hair, that, that, that idea that I had, I, I remembered. And I said, you know what? Now that I have time, now I'm gonna draw it. And I drew a sketch. When I drew that sketch, I pushed it away from me and I looked at it and it was like, wow, this is going to work for sure. There was no doubt in my mind that this was not gonna work. And that's when the, the whole journey started. My mom, my mom would come visit me and I would tell her, mom, I have a very, very great idea, you know? And then I told her, I'm gonna sketch it, I'm gonna draw it for you and I'm gonna 
um, write down all the, the explanations for it and I'm gonna send it to you. So one day I, I go and I mail it to her. Um, and like two days later, I call her on the phone. I said, did you get the mail yet? Did you get the mail? And she was like, no, I haven't gotten it yet. And so whatever, she goes, I'm literally pulling up to the house now. So she actually picked it up from the mailbox while I was on the phone with her. And she actively opened it up while I was on the phone with her. And then she said, um, I told her, what do you think? And she said, oh my God, we got to do something about this. You know, and then she goes, I'm going to go find the lawyer. So then she started explaining to me that when a person has an invention that you need to patent it, you get the, the, the real ways to actually pursue the patent so you can be the owner of that invention so nobody else can copy your idea. So she started sending me um, patent information and stuff like that and I started studying patents while I was in there. And um, we actually filed for, a, it's called the provisional patent application. The provisional application locks in your idea for a year. So if anybody tries to come with this um, idea, your name is already locked in for that year. You have to file for the non-provisional application before that year ends for you to still have um, custody of that, of that um, in, um, idea. You know what I'm saying? So while I was in, we, we actually filed the non-provisional non application and that's when I ended up in patent pending. Um, I ended up doing four years in federal prison um, that I'm not happy about at all. I'm not. But uh, I could say that if, if that would have never happened, I wouldn't have this invention today. So when I got out, I was still at patent pending. And 10 months later was when, um, when I, I, they, 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 they denied me. They denied my patent. They deny I couldn't believe it, you know? We, had, we ended up having to do something that's called an amendment and fight it because what they were denying me for had nothing to do with my patent. It was another patent that, I guess the words were similar or something, but they denied me, you know? And then I kept fighting it and fighting and fighting until finally they granted it. And I couldn't believe it, you know? Out of 100 patents, maybe only about eight get granted to finally actually have the grant to my patent. I was, that's when I, I pursued it. That's when I started like being serious about it. That's when I ran into One Stop Inventing. We were all able to come together and make it happen.